Hey everybody, Sam here and Angela and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to another video of us working in our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home where we are about to the point of covering all this up you see behind us. I'm excited. First up we need to go ahead and add in all of our drywall blocking and insulate. So let's go ahead and have some of that fun. Itchy fun. So I just cut this piece, this sliver, to use as blocking for our drywall. Wait a second. You guys show everybody you actually use a circular saw. Say that first. Yes, I actually used the circular saw. It kind of pushed me to it whenever I had a piece ready to cut and Sam was doing something else. So if I wanted to do something, I needed to do it myself. So it wasn't as bad as I thought but I'll stay to the smaller pieces and let Sam do the plywood pieces like four by eight. Okay, hon? Okay, so what you got? So this is the blocking for the drywall that's gonna go on this side right here. So we have somewhere to attach the drywall to in the corner. You didn't see that part. To attach the plywood to the studs, we're using two and a half inch spack screws. I'm just driving them in from the two by four through it and into the plywood. Holds it good enough. We'll just put about three or four per piece and that'll be fine. <laughs> That's what would happen to me. And there's no good angle to do this and still let you see. Did you see where the scissors went? No, but I have a question to put you on the spot. Uh-huh. Can you please explain to people why it is not dire emergency for us not to insulate the closet wall and the bedroom wall and the bathroom wall why do we not care why do we not care well when it comes to needing to be quiet and having it nice and quiet to sleep we usually have two fans going at least like box fans loud noise so it doesn't matter and as far as like kitchen noise maybe dishwasher running at night it really doesn't bother us so does that answer your question i think so it explains why we don't care. Have not done yeah. interior walls. Same for the bathroom. We didn't do that one because it doesn't bother us. I will also add to that, that being able to hear parts of the home, whether or not the boys are killing each other, fighting something mm -hmm. wrong, is a good benefit. We don't want to be in the bedroom in this bubble of solitude where we can't hear them if there, something's wrong. So the family that has no insulation between each other has no barriers between each other <laughs> we know everything that's happening yep we hear it all In our door installation video, a couple of you guys commented and actually educated me on this pre-hung door that it was off a little bit. 
and I kind of noticed it being off, but I didn't really know how to fix it. Thanks to your comments, I learned how to fix it, and I am putting it back together now. And the gaps and everything are much better. It is tighter, it seals and closes a lot better. And I just wanted to jump in here really quickly to say thank you and let you guys know we do read the comments. We may not get to respond to all of them, but we read them all, and ones like that are invaluable. You're helping us fix our door, and that's worth a lot. So, thank you. Look at that, it's much better. It looks normal. It's closed in up here and it's yeah. a perfectly even gap all the way down. Yeah. You can't put your thumb in it. <laughs> Around the edges. I have to look. Play with my new car, smoke it. Show us, tell us. Okay. So this is a limited edition Ford. I just got it today at Walmart. It's a pretty nice truck. Doors and everything open. The cool thing is, I never see this on toy trucks, but the mirrors can open and like do that, like the doors. So the next truck is a Jeep truck. It's a pretty nice one. Doors open too. How'd you get that? Um, finding Daddy's wallet. I got me and my brother Isaac got twenty dollars. Like me, I got twenty dollars. My brother got twenty dollars. So I spent um, $20 on this and the other truck. Yeah, funny story time. I had lost my wallet for about a week solid. Was running our tractor out doing some stuff in the front yard, which is in another video that will show you guys later. And uh, I lost my wallet at that point. We looked everywhere. Couldn't find it. A week later went on. Couldn't find it. Give up. I've ordered all new stuff. Well, the other day the boys were playing on the tractor here behind the house. And all of a sudden they start screaming which we don't know is that good is it bad don't know at that point it was good elijah comes up she, he says i found your wallet apparently it was sitting right below the seat although that's not where it was when we lost it we combed through everything but we figured it was lost in the yard so as a reward for finding my wallet and because there was more cash in there than i ever would have thought for whatever reason i gave him and isaac both 20 bucks finder's fee so he got the trucks and now Let's go see what Isaac got, because I don't know what he got yet. What'd you get with your money? Um, I got a set of troopers. Two of those. Well, where's the other one? Here's a cool one. I need to make, like, a, a, like snow block thing for this trooper. So now I have to do all of this. So you got a set of Lego? Yeah. And it looks like a chocolate milk? Yep, right there <laughs> in my cabinet. You are living the life. Legos, chocolate milk, the whole room to yourself. So there's a look at what the both boys got with their finder's fees. And there's another look at where the kids are if they're not outside, like today it's rainy. Usually Isaac's in the front room playing with Legos and Elijah will sometimes be in there or he really is also going to be helping out with us usually too. But for now he's playing in our bedroom with the blocks. So there you go. Let's get back to work. Of course. Well, looks like we're going to have another junction box in here. Because in typical mobile home fashion, it can't just be a light. It's got to be a light plus a junction box with two wires running in. So, we'll just leave this a junction and we'll run the light wire from here to the new box and then plug it in and do it that way. So, looks like more patches in the ceiling. By patches, I mean not patches. We carefully pull this out because this will go right back in but at least this way I have access to run a wire from this hole to the one inside the closet and I can tie them together at least. 
Oh, oh, oh. That oh. actually worked. <laughs> Especially because I had to go through the ceiling truss that's right here. I had to go up and over. That's amazing. I have the wires connected, the new wire run, and everything. I'm using some Wago lever lock nuts. If you have never used these, do yourself a favor, try them out. Once you use them once, you will never want to use the little twist wire nuts ever again. These are so much easier to work with and easier to undo, change, and just connect things together with. So, got it all done. Now we're gonna fit it back up into place, attach the screws, and then we'll add ourselves a decorative cover to seal it up, but still always give us access to this box if we ever need to in the future. Which is the correct way to do this, by the way. You don't just cap them and throw them up in your ceiling or your wall. Don't ever do that. You always wanna have access to them. Just wanted to show you kind of some of the blocking that we have to do for drywall. It's kind of the behind the scenes stuff that you don't really think about until you're too far into it. <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Alright, so here we have put some plywood blocking and this is so whenever we attach drywall this way, we have something at the corner for it to attach to. And this is all scrap. We were able to use up almost all of our scrap wood doing the blocking and stuff like this. There is going to be more on the inside of the closet right here and on this side. And then if you look on this side, here's some. And then on this side, it's even crazier. We had to add in two extra pieces. One for this wall and then one for this wall so these are never going to be seen and you could almost say it's almost like wasted but you have to have it for your drywall to attach correctly so we come around here and we had to add in some on this side again we just pieced it together with scraps and then just like in the pantry, this closet has a little bit of an edge right there, so it was enough that we could attach. We added some on this either side, inside and out. And then the wasted parts again over here on this side and this side. All behind the scenes, but you got to have it. All right, I believe we have finally reached the point where we are ready to start hanging drywall on the brand new closet pantry and kitchen wall as far as our plan of action i think we're going to drywall it in reverse order to how we framed it i want to start in the inside divider wall first probably do the interior of the closets then come outside do the exteriors and then finish out with this wall here probably i don't know there's there's no rhyme or reason i'm just trying to think i don't want to box myself in in case something happens to try and make drywall installation a little more fun and interesting for you guys, we actually bought some tools we wanted to show you. Now don't get excited, we didn't spend a lot of money. We're talking about drywall driver bits. First up is the Montana Tools Drywall Setter Kit. It's a holder with some extra bits. And the second one is the Bosch Dimpler. Alright, go ahead and open your tool. Since you already cut it open for me. So both of these are very similar in their, I guess, design and functionality. They are very similar to that cheap little drywall bit that I used for the bedroom, except these are supposed to have a few more features. Both of them have basically the, the bit driver itself and the collet are independent, so I can hold the collet and spin. This is supposed to quit burning and tearing the paper as much as you install it. There's a close-up look of the Montana drywall bit driver and the Bosch Dimpler. Functionality-wise, I think they're supposed to do the same thing. Uh, Bosch is a well-known tool company that's available probably around the world. Montana is one that I did not know about until Doug from Different told me about it and said, hey, check out Montana tools. They're made in the USA and they've got a drywall kit along with other driver and drill bits and kits and things that I'd like to get eventually. But check out their drywall kit and see what you think. So 
went ahead and bought two of them. Bought the Montana one and the Bosch. We're going to use these as we install this. We'll probably do one for one closet, one for the other. And then let you guys know if there's a difference, if we like them, if there's one better than the other. And I don't know. Try to make drywall interesting. Sound good? Sounds good. Let's go. I'm just picking it up just a hair off the floor. One wall down with the Montana drywall bit. Um, I want to save my opinion until I try the dimpler to make it a fair fight. I'm going to go into the pantry and do the exact same identical wall drywall installation with the dimpler. So let's go in there and hang the drywall. I wouldn't pull it so far off the I won't. I didn't realize I picked it up like an inch. It's big enough for my thumb to go under. Okay, that's weird. What? This must have a clutch inside. It doesn't burn, it stops. Like, the bit itself stops. I don't know, there's some magic going on in the dimples. This dimple is magic. <laughs> It is cutting it. Yeah, it is going deep. So we are still plugging along here at the pantry. Um, Angela is putting the pieces in as I cut them. We're going through a lot of different scrap just to find pieces that fit to use up as much as we can. So I've got the piece here for this outside wall ready to go. Now that doesn't reach all the way up top. So what I did there was I cut it at a point where I can put a big piece up there at the very top. This is just allowing us to go through and use up a lot of the scrap that we are. In the meanwhile, it is raining outside, so our boys are in here. They're in there playing with blocks, stacking them up, and otherwise having fun. It's kind of nice to hang out in the house, even though it's not done done. 
it's still nice to be in here. It's so. big. Yeah, a lot bigger than the camper. We can roam around and, you know, hey, we got one drop cord for a light and a couple of fans and we're good for now. <laughs> Somebody's doing some impacts in the bedroom in there. Let's see what that's about. What's he doing? I pretty much showed Isaac what this tool does. Well, show us. So this tool is for like going in angles, I think. So let's move these Lego men. Um, these won't, it won't really work, but you do this. It's like if something's way really close to the floor, but in a box or something, you could go like that and it's screwing the drill bits. What do you think? Cool. <laughs> Man of many words. Are you done yet? <laughs> Alright. It's done. Let's go home. Hey, we are home. Wait a second. <laughs> Our second home, our camper. Oh. Let's go to the camper. <laughs> to the Pardo. All right, we've reached our stopping point for this evening. The pantry is completely done. It is drywalled inside and out. And the closet, we've only got that main wall done that we started off with. So let's go rest in our uh, palatious estate, AKA Camper Town. Kick back and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Did I say bye? Bye. And then I'm going to see you for like one and a half seconds. Oh no. Fade away. Welcome to tomorrow, which is today, or unless it's not today, it was yesterday, or sometime in the past for you guys. Either way, we are here in the bedroom, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to just get this knocked out and be done with it. Me too. Hanging drywall is not terrible, but it's not a whole lot of giggly fun either especially in small little closet spaces with the ladder and both of us trying to work. But either way, let's get it done. Let's go.
the bedroom is all drywalled. So is the closet and the pantry. You can't see that right now though. So I think it looks great. And looking at the ceiling, you are able to see how much we gained in bedroom space. It's about two foot by four foot, which is a lot. We get to do a little bit more, and then most of this is ready for spackling, sheetrock, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Mud! <laughs> These screws don't fit the box? What? Ow! What? Hunk of junk. Well, okay, you guys get the idea. This is what eventually we'll have. A nice little white circle on the ceiling. Don't break it. It's plastic, and it doesn't work. So, hunk of junk, hunk of junk. That's a nice cut right there. Woo! A good job whoever did that drywall cut. Right? Yep. Right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now somebody. Else. This one's still hopping. 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 Hopscotch. You know you're gonna to have to explain later in the video why <laughs> you're using this. I know. This. We'll talk about it though. Oh, that went too far. Just walk away. Just walk away. We have reached our new laundry room area and this is hands down the most complicated section of drywall that we probably will ever have in this house. We have our laundry station over here and this is one of those instances where we have a lot of irons in the fire and it's really handy to have a licensed plumber in the family to just, you know, not worry about stuff. So we have our washing machine connections, we have our outlets, we have our dryer outlet, and we have a junction box plus a studer vent all on this area. And every single one of those need their own cutout. So to make this hopefully as easy as possible on us, I'm going to lower the joint of my panels. We've been riding them right here at 48 inch height so we maximize you know, largest pieces of drywall. I'm going to lower the joint down to right below the washing machine hookup. That way we have the bottom section and the top section and we kind of split the number of protrusions or outlets or holes we have to cut in our panels. We'll be able to use our blind mark tool for the bottom and for the outlet for the top. 
And then for the other things, it should be pretty easy, just measuring left, right, up and down, and cutting things to fit. I hope. Let's give it a shot. For this section of drywall, we are going to be using a different size cubit cutter. This is the two gang or square box cutting bit. Jiggle, jiggle. It's loud, it's dusty, but it's quick and gives a nice finish. Plus, you got a wall plug in case you totally mess up. <laughs> we don't ever do that. Mm -mm. Oh, this one down here looks good. Yay. Let's see the other one. Woo! I'm glad it works. And hands down, the blind mark and the cubits, worth it. Paid for themselves in lack of frustration, annoyances, marital fights, and wasting of drywall. For the laundry hookup and the studer vent, I held the board up in place and I made a couple of reference marks. And what I'm doing now is using my T-square to transfer the marks to find the locations of where these objects are. I think I got them backwards. Yeah. All right. So that's the laundry, and that's the studer vent. Very interesting looking piece of drywall here. Not perfect. Yeah, Sam got a little sloppy in his measurements, but that's why the studer vent and the laundry hookups, they give you these really nice wide trim rings to go on. Yeah, it'll look great whenever it's all done. I think it looks great now. Good job. Can you tell I'm using scraps? That's a different color paper. <laughs> oh, it is, isn't it?
this is the last piece of drywall for the pantry, bedroom, laundry room, kitchen. closet, kitchen, last one. I present you the last piece. Here is the outdoor entry, <laughs> indoor entry, with a nice new door. And right here will be my stackable washer and dryer. And then you can turn around over here. And here is the pantry. It'll have more shelves and stuff later. We'll come in here. And here is our bigger bedroom because we added more space so we can move around in here better. But we still have our closet for our clothes to hang up. And it's gonna have a new light inside. We've got this one switched out and we are ready to finish the drywall. I can't believe it's already done and it's amazing to see everything how it's gonna be. We've lived in this house for almost seven years now and we're changing it. And so it's gonna be really weird, but totally awesome too. So I can't wait. So we both had the chance to try each of the different types of, what do you call it? Drywall bits. Drywall bits. Tried the Dimpler by Bosch. Mm -hmm. The Montana yeah, Montana Tools drywall kit. And then kind of like a generic one, there are DeWalt name brand as well. Mm -hmm. That's the one I used in the bedroom drywall. So I have Mine. to say, for me, I actually went back to just the plain old Phillips head bit. You did? I, using the drill and putting it on, I guess, the slow setting, the mm -hmm. low setting, I was able to tighten it down a lot more controlled than with these. I feel like these with me, just me, slipped more and I had a harder time getting them more the same. Dimpled? Yeah. You just, okay, said. I didn't like those as much. For me, my favorite one is the Bosch Dimpler. Now, I'm not in love with this one. I'm not head over heels with honestly any of these but between the ones we tried the Bosch Dimpler I liked the fact that it did have a clutch and I don't know the bit really gripped the screw heads a lot better and you didn't have to push as hard this Montana kit the quality you it makes you want to love it the fact that it's made in the USA it makes you want to love it but I did not like it at all it was stripped you had to force the screws in and most of the time I'd go to start it now when I have to push really hard, it would slip and I would stab in the wall. And that's just really frustrating. So for me, Montana bits, no. Not gonna use that one for any more drywall. If I get to use my own bit, I'll use the Dimpler by Bosch. However, it only comes with one tip. So I guess when this tip is worn out, well, I've gotta buy more. And it's a special, it's not just your number two normal yeah. Phillips driving bit. So I don't know, when this guy wears out- How much was that one? I want to say the Bosch was about eight or nine dollars. Okay. The Montana kit was more. The Montana was most expensive um, and least favorite. And then the real little tiny little guys, these guys, the one that I use in the bedroom, that was the cheapest, probably seven dollars for four of them. So at the same time though, I mean, 
I got tired of changing bits back and forth when I'll use the drill or and she had it. <laughs> so I just kept the regular Phillips bit and honestly it wasn't that bad. I mean, speed is not the name of the game for us with drywall. With these kind of cuts and installing it, we're not trying to go as fast as we can, just mm -hmm. get it done. It's more take your time, make sure you line up on those one by three studs when they were there and just make sure you're right. So I don't know. There's our real world drywall bit review of all the ones and different types we could find. And in the end, probably was a waste of our money. But maybe we'll save you guys some money all the same. Yeah. Well, how do you feel knowing that that part is done? I feel, uh, I feel like it's not done, but it is done. It's kind of one of those things where I mean, it's been the focus for a week. Probably. And it's something like drywall, drywall, drywall. It's done. It looks cool. But it's also one of those things as we're in it, it kind of creeps up on you. Mm -hmm. It's not like, pow, you're done. Because we're in here working and cutting everyone and just like trudging along and seeing how much farther we got. But it feels great. It looks great. I think we did good with drywall. Mm -hmm. We don't have a ton of unnecessary joints. We tried to use the factory edges as much as we can so we have our mud troughs when we go to finish. And I'm glad to be done with it. <laughs> So I think you also need to tell them uh, a little story of going to the store and getting our closet doors, but not getting the closet doors. Yeah, we went and I looked at bifold doors. We looked at accordion doors and we looked at two doors that would open mm -hmm. like so. And then louvered bifold doors as well. Yeah, and I didn't like any of them. Nope. <laughs> so like... The bifold doors, we have a 36 inch opening, so the bifold doors would be 18 inches. Well, that's going to be in the way of the back door. If the back door needs to be opened, it's going to hit it and mess it up. Which and apparently just, is a big concern. It, You're well, concerned that someone would, would be in, in the pantry stuff. while somebody opens the door? I don't know. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But So, Long story short, we're going to not do any doors on the closet or the pantry right now. And we're going to wait until we get moved in and see what we feel like would work better. Okay, what I feel like would work better. Yeah, tell the truth. <laughs> it's all about you. This I is would be my fine. area. Yeah. Laundry, kitchen, this is my area. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm thrilled about the idea of seeing the pantry the whole time. I think it's visually going to be cluttered, but that's fine. We can always put doors up later. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have closet doors to move into our house. So there's bigger fish to fry for sure. I told them we can put up a nice curtain if we need to. At least it would hide the stuff and it's not going to be in the way. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So we are definitely undecided on that. So rather than sit and dwell, we're just going to pass, table it for now. Yep. And it's go on with something It's not something else. totally needed. So there it is. There it is. We stopped the camera so we could kind of collectively get our thoughts together. We're trying to figure out what the next video is, what the next step that we're going to share with you guys. And we're just not sure. There's so many things we have to do. There's so many things that are weather dependent and money dependent somewhat. And we're just not exactly sure where we're going next. Either way, we promise it will be here. <laughs> Somewhere in the house, outside the house, around the house, or on our property. It's going to be one of our steps to getting in our house because yeah. we are very ready to be in our house. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fan life and camper life stuff is very romanticized online, I think. And uh, we've, we've done it, been there, done that. We're good. We're ready to move into this giant camper of a house. So the sooner we can get there, the better. We have a lot of large infrastructure things that we have to get done. Um, we have to do some work for our power service, which means heavy equipment rental. That's going to be fun. We have to do our skirting, underpinning. We've got to do our porches and decks or steps or whatever we need and all sorts of other stuff. Not to mention finishing out drywall, electrical floors, painting. All of the above. Yeah. It's a long list. Regardless, you know we will bring you guys along for all of that stuff. So if you're interested in any of this and you're not a subscriber, stick around, subscribe. We don't push that a lot. You don't hear us begging for likes and subs or whatever. We know if you like it, you'll stay. If you don't, you're gone. 
you're not here at this point anyway if you didn't like it. So it is what it is. Either way, we'll be here having fun, and you're ready for the outro. Let's go. Well, guys, thanks for coming along as we got our drywall done. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye. Done. <laughs> what is that? That's what you did. Where are my cheeks are getting higher and higher and higher. <laughs> we got the drywall. Done. Uh huh. Would you look at it? Just look at that. Nice. I'm glad that worked. So, obviously. What? Obviously what? You'll get to see pretty much all of it, so stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where do we go with that one? <laughs> I can't film you. You're all over the place. She's going to put that insulation in there. Yep, in this wall. That's it. Bye. Well, we'll bring you along for everything, so you can stay tuned. I was I was trying to see if there was a way I could like put it in and trying like, to get smooth. Well, trying to be smooth. We're still in whoop. There went our workbench, our trash can workbench. Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to the next video of us renovating our 1988 Paul Harbor Single Wide Mobile Home. If you didn't catch that, you gotta slow it down. <laughs> too fast, too dumb. Okay. <laughs> I don't want it to touch me. I don't want to do this. <laughs> this is what you hire people for. Really, it is. Quiet, quiet. I'm going to do a video here. Imagine that. Video, video. Ready to go. Been smacked upside the head. <sighs> There's no yawning on YouTube. <laughs> Rock and roll. Ooh, where's my hat? Thanks to your comments, I knew how to fix it, or I learned how to fix it. Yeah. Ready? Ready? Oh, it did it! Hold on, I built that. I know it doesn't have jack studs under it. Oh, come like, on, I don't need a jack stud. Good grief. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I hadn't wanted to do it myself, No respect. Yes, respect. I don't want your hard work to so. go falling. Oh, okay. You don't care about me. It's, <laughs> it's the wall. A little bit too bright. A little bit too bright. It's not that bright in reality. Card full. No. Nope. Maximum time reached. Gosh, it's already been 30 minutes. Jeez. We've done. One, two, three, four, five pieces in 30 minutes. Oh, okay. We are ready to knock this out. We have not installed that much drywall. Um, yeah, we have. Good, Ashley Graham. Look over here. Hi. Hello. All right. Welcome. Hello. Sounds like something they would call it Pillsbury Doughboy. Pillsbury Doughboy is the dimpler. Ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Good morning, Starshine. The Earth says hello. Uh, okay, what? What is it? What Honey, is you're happening? not supposed to be on that. You go beyond that. Are you still filming? Yeah. Wow, okay, that's a blonde moment. Well, okay, that explains why I got two inches. <laughs> what? Did you cut off the two inches? Shush. No, this is correct. See? We're good. Gosh, amateurs, right? Welcome to Amateur Hour Drywall Edition. Bless it. Too much stuff going on over here, okay? I'm thinking about all the people watching and just be nervous. And... 